Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One, EET 121. Today we're going to discuss Boolean analysis of logic circuits. And the book starts off with a pretty simple example where we've got an AND gate, an OR gate, and an AND gate arranged in this, final, in this manner to finally get ourselves an output of X. So one of the ways we, uh, we do these analysis is is just go left to right, making use of intermediate values. So basically our first gate we reach is our AND gate, where this output here is C and D, which is fed into the input of an OR gate, and the other input is B. So this output right here would be B, OR, C, and D. Okay, so what is, uh, what is being fed into this last and final AND gate? Well, it's A and the output of the OR gate. So B, OR, C, and D. Okay, so X equals A and B, OR, C, and D. So how do we create a truth table for this? My recommendation to you is to use these intermediate values. The book says um, find all possible occurrences where it's equal to one. Yeah, you can do that, but it's going to get very, very, very confusing if you've got, you know, this is just three gates. Imagine 10 gates now. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. So let's start off with D, C, B, A. These are all possible values that we're going to put in. Zero, one. I'm just going to go ahead and draw these out here. And there's our huge long list right there of all possible occurrences of our inputs A, B, C, and D. And if you guys recognize a pattern, it's every other one for, for A. It's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. B has two zeros, two ones, two zeros, two ones. C has four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones. And D has eight zeros, eight ones. So think about it. One, two, four, eight. If we had an E, we'd probably have 16 zeros, 16 ones. Okay, that's all possible inputs. Now let me go ahead and uh, move the circuit over here so we can see everything. And there we go. So previously we said the output of the first AND gate is C and D, and I'm going to call that M. And there's M right there. And the, well, actually let's just work with M. So Output M, C and D, the only time it's high is when both C and D are high. The only time we get that is here. All the rest of the times, D1, C0, right here, C1, D0. So all the rest of these are zeros, like that. Now. This output for the OR gate, remember, was B, OR, C, and D. We can call this output N. But if we think about that, C and D is output M. So B, OR, M. So what's happening here is now we need to take M and B, excuse me, M or B to get our column N. So let's fill this. So basically, anytime either one of those is 1, you're going to have a 1 as the output. So right now, B is high, M is low. B is high, M is low. B is high, M is, uh, excuse me, M is low still. And now we get situations where M is high and B is low. Now both of them are high. So all the rest of them are zeros. I'm not saying it's wrong in the book there about basically uh, finding uh, all possible occurrences where x is equal to 1, but this is a very systematic approach. You could easily lose yourself when you've got a number of gates. Okay, so let's talk about this third and final gate here. So we determined that a and b or c and d is equal to our output x, but if we think about that, what is x? x looks like it's the AND of output n and a. So now all you have to do is n and a. n 
and A. Anytime both of those guys are 1, we're going to have a 1, like here, 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 and here. The rest of those would be zeros. And there you go. Basically, five occurrences when x output is high. Okay, so now the one in your book is listed as A, B, C, D. So it looks a little bit different there, but if you run the occurrences of the inputs, you'll find out that the truth table totally matches. All they did was just run A, B, C, D in reverse. Okay, let's talk about simplification uh, using Boolean algebra. Okay, this is something, as I said previously, you cannot buy. You got to practice it, you got to earn it. So let's do some uh, examples here. And again, we're using the 12 laws of Boolean, uh, Boolean algebra and De Morgan's th theorem, the simplifier Boolean expressions. Let's start off with our first example right here. And there we go. We've got A and not B, or A and not B or C, or B and not B or C. What does this look like in a circuit? Well, in a word, ugly. I mean, look at that. You've got your, right here is the output, A and not B, being fed into our final OR gate. Oh, we've got some construction going on. I don't know if you guys can hear that. And then here's our A and not OR, B or C, nor B or C. And then here's our B and not B or C, all being fed into our final three input OR gates. So. Ugly. Let's see if we can go ahead and simplify this. So basically, our first one right here is to use De Morgan's theorem on this guy. So what is that? It's the negation of the uh, of those variables anded together. We can also use that right there. 